This video will serve as an addendum to my OceanGate Titan video entitled Connections Between Interface Rings. Thanks to a viewer's comment, I had a revelation about how the frame release system actually worked. So this video became necessary to correct what I previously thought. In that Connections Between Interface Rings video, I made a swag, a phrase that the boss at my first engineering job sometimes used. Comment if you know what that term means. Okay, so let's get into it. We can see here the assembly that I didn't know the purpose of in the aforementioned video. It turns out that is actually the frame pin assembly. That location makes much more sense than what I proposed in my previous video, but hey, it's hard to determine some of these things with so little information, and I honestly have no clue what sort of, quote, innovative ideas they might have employed. Seems like anything was possible with this sub. We can now verify that this piece here with the landing skids attached constitutes the frame. So this whole assembly was supposed to drop. It was attached to the interface rings by means of these blocks mounted to the cross beam. I remember seeing those in the debris video, but I just couldn't tell what purpose they would have served. At the time, I didn't know that the interface rings actually had four lugs and not three. I drew this up in CAD. It consists of the block mounted to the cross beam, a bracket bolt of the interface ring, which served as the means of connecting the whole of the frame, and a pin that, according to Bruce Morton, the former OceanGate engineer, was removed pneumatically. The legs were attached to the side lugs of the interface ring, I assume by means of a mounting block, which the legs were friction fitted to. In other words, nothing actually fastened them to the interface rings. They were held in place by a sort of press fit. I assume a fairly snug fit. Here's a closer view. I added a cross-sectional view for more context. I'm not sure if there were one or two brackets. It may have only been one. Anyway, you can see here that all that would have needed to be done is to drive out this pin, and then the frame should, in theory, just fall off. The five bolts across the top of the bracket would be three to fasten the bracket to the lug on the interface ring, and the outer two bolts would have been what the device used to drive the pin out was attached to. Since the mechanism to drive out the pins was apparently pneumatic, I imagine these appendages under the belly would have been the actuators which would have been used to drive out the pins. I suspect they may have been connected to the high-pressure oxygen tank and activated by the use of a normally closed solenoid valve. Some have suggested that this was done manually with a pump inside the hole, but I just don't see where that could have been located with all the batteries and O2 tanks under the deck and no spare room where the computers were. Also, this would require more penetration somewhere in the titanium parts. Each penetration was a liability, so I don't know that it would have been done that way. If we take this a step further, it appears that they had a cable and pulley system that was intended to yank the pin out. It looks like the pin may have been inserted into a nylon bushing, which is what you would want to prevent corrosion. And looking a little closer, it does appear that there actually was two brackets, and they were probably made from stainless steel. The actuator would have had a rod in it that pulled the cable as it extended outwards and thus that would pull out the pin. This system seems to be kind of weak though. I, I would think you'd want it to be a hydraulic system, not pneumatic. To make how I believe this would have worked a little clearer, here is a perspective view of the assembly. This is just a quick hand drawing I did in 20 minutes or so while I was thinking it through and looking at as many pictures as I could find of that area of the sub. Here's roughly how it would be arranged. There is the bracket slash plate that mounts it to the front interface ring. This would be sitting behind that block on the cross beam and attached to the back side of the lug on the bottom of the interface ring. The frame release pin would pass through at this location. Next, there is the cage that all this stuff is mounted to. The actuator would be mounted here somewhere. The piston rod would be in this area. One end of the cable would be attached to that piston rod. It would go through this pulley system. I don't understand how that part works exactly, but I suspect that the cable actually goes around the axle that's attached to these rollers or whatever they are. From there, that cable goes to the frame release pin. 
There would have been other items connected like the airlines, the actuator, for example, but this is the basic idea. I don't really see how else it could have been done with the way this is arranged by looking at the pictures of the sub. Now the reason why I say this system is weak is because if only one side of the frame were to drop when it is jettisoned, it could cause some amount of binding on the other pin, making it much more difficult to get out. In a perfect world, they would both pop out simultaneously. But as you know, we don't live in a perfect world. Therefore, a hydraulic system with a linkage arrangement would have been much better. No cables to break or get snagged on something or who knows what else could, have, could happen. In my line of work, with anything that has to do with life safety, it is better to over-design than to fall short. With a pneumatic actuator, it just can't provide the kind of force that a hydraulic system can. I have specified pneumatic actuators on projects before, but they were only moving relatively light objects. In my opinion, this is a completely wrong way to use them. I imagine the rear connection was similar to what we can see on the front. In the case of the rear lug, we can see here that it would have been close to that notch in the interface ring for the wiring port. Maybe that was a factor in the implosion. Maybe not. So sorry for any confusion I may have caused. I'm learning as I go along. I hope this makes things more clear. I am happy to have finally figured that part out.